Hey folks, what's going on out there? It is Lumps the Clown, and it has been a little bit since I have revisited the series that I am going to be going back into. Clock Tower, better known as Clock Tower 2 in Japan, and this came out for the Sony PlayStation 1. A lot of folks might recognize this as one of my first LPs ever, and it is still absolutely one of my favorites. One of my good buddies, Joe, uh, Joe Necroman, uh, out there on YouTube, has been playing this under the Helen scenario. Uh, I have already covered the Helen scenario in my own LP, so this time around I'm going to be going as Jennifer. And the only way that you can get to play as Jennifer is if you get to talk to Harris twice in that first hallway. Okay, So as long as you talk to him twice or more than once, then you're going to be good to go and you're going to get to play as Jennifer. Uh, other than that, the prologue pretty much goes the same. Uh, you have to talk to Harris one last time. You gotta get him to uh, either take the statue to Rick, or you have to say no to that, and then you'll go and show it to Sullivan down there at the Metropolitan Library. Uh, in this case, I have my path completely set forward, and we're just gonna get in here and rock and roll for you folks. So let's go ahead without any further ado and get started. So for any new entrants out there who have not played Clock Tower, consider yourselves lucky that I just spared you having to sit through the prologue. Now the prologue is very long and text heavy and it can scare off a lot of folks. Uh, if you wanted to see it in its entirety, I would highly suggest that you check out my first LP on it uh, under the Helen Maxwell scenario. We'll go ahead and slap save on this. Now I did go in fact clear out all of my old clock tower data. It's the same shit that's been sitting in there for about a year now. So it's just time to start fresh. Helen isn't home yet. I think I will go out for a while. And good, because that fucking house is ugly! That fucking wallpaper. <laughs> oh shit. Where shall I go? So, obviously, not the Oslo Weekly newspaper for the folks that have been around since the very first Clock Tower first fear that came out for the Super Famicom. Uh, Jennifer's hot shit, so the last place she's probably going to want to go is a newspaper place. Um, Norway International Hotel. Let's check it out. I wonder what kind of boy he is. Well, we'll see. We're going to meet Edward. Is this boy Edward? Are you by chance Jennifer? Yes, I am Jennifer. I thought so. I recognize your face from all the pictures in the paper. Oh, my name is Kay, and I am an instructor at the Granite Orphanage. The Granite Orphanage? Yes, but I began after you left. So Kay is uh, an employee at the same orphanage that had taken in Jennifer Simpson in the very first clock tower, for those who need some backstory on that. Is he? Yes, he is Edward. Say hello, Edward. Uh, hello. Hello, Edward. How do you do? Jennifer. Edward had lost his memory from the shock of what happened. Yes, I've heard. You were also involved, weren't you? Speaking with you might jog his memory. I was hoping you would be able to come visit Edward. Please? Well, I'm right fucking there. Yes, that would be fine. I will come as often as I can. Well, I must be going. Oh, I am sorry for keeping you. See you again soon, Edward. Bye-bye. All right. So, got Norway International Hotel wiped out. Next up is the Municipal Library. We'll go check it out. Helen's mentor, Mr. Sullivan, is the head librarian. Hello, Jennifer. Did you come to check out a book today or something? <laughs> Say the fucking text. Mr. Sullivan, you're as cute as ever. How's Helen? She's fine, but she's been busy lately. I see. Oh, by the way, I've added to my collection again. Do you want to come see? It's quite a collection of archaeological value. Uh, no. No, thank you. 
it would take too long. Goodbye, Mr. Sullivan. Well, drop in for a visit any time. You dirty old bastard, I wonder what he's got in mind. Well, we knocked that out. Let's go to the Universe Research Building. That's the same building that Professor Barton was walking around in. I will go see Helen. She should still be in her lab. Oh, hello, Jennifer. What's up? Oh, nothing much. I just came for a little visit. Oh, really? I'm going to be a bit late tonight. You go ahead and eat without me. Are you busy? My hard drive crashed and I lost all my data. I've got to get it restored tonight. Oh, I see. Please leave the key in its usual place. Okay, I will. Good luck, Helen. Well, shit, hard drives crash and everything seems pretty dull at this point in time. Let's go home. There's really about nothing else we can do. Huh? Someone's in front of the house! Oh, that's... Well, now I'm all fucking curious. Who is it? There's some fucking guy standing in here. Who the hell? You're the reporter that came to the university yesterday, aren't you? Oh, please call me Nolan. I have been collecting information on the Clock Tower case for a long time now. Even though it is a really big case, very little of the truth is understood. As a reporter, I simply can't leave it alone. Yes, the truth. And I'm interested in you, too. Now, bear in mind that Jennifer is, in fact, 15 years old, and Nolan is 29, and that's according to the manual. Um, I did talk to my buddy, Jod Necroman, and he informed me that in Norway, uh, there is no such thing as, like, statutory rape or whatever. I guess it's, like, really, really low. So... You know, that's just another bit of background for you. This is happening in Norway, folks, not the United States. Hey, what did you say to having dinner with me? I don't care what you tell me. I just want you to talk. Are you asking me for an interview or for a date? Uh, well, uh... Uh... That's it. Both. Yes, both an interview and a date. All right, then, tee-hee, let's go. Ugh, I don't know, man. If I was dad and some fucking 29-year-old was knocking on my 15-year-old daughter's door, I'd be knocking his bitch ass out, and that's just for real. It's very late. Someone seems to be following me. Fucking Nolan didn't have the common decency to fucking walk her home? What a piece of shit. Oh, I'll just dump you on this random street corner. Oh, fuck, I can't get in there. Hopefully I need some axe-wielding maniac with a chainsaw arm. Ooh. Oh, shit. Whew. Oh, fuck. Ah! Enter Scissor Man, folks. He is on our ass. Run, bitch! Ah! Uh, sometimes you can't get your double taps confused in this game. It's very simple to do. And she'll just casually stroll down the hallway, and fucking Scissor Man is right on her ass. Oh god, please don't get in here. Oh shit! He found us out. Oh god. Oh god. Pick it up! BAM! Eat broomstick, bitch! Yeah! All right, so we got out of that pretty much unscathed, so that's good. Uh, there's some doors over here I'm going to check out. 
Now there are points in the game where Scissor Man will jump out at you, so be very cautious. Oh god, fuck, man. Bug off! Now I think I've seen a fire extinguisher down the hallway. I'm pretty sure I can use that. Come on, grab it, grab it, grab it! Grab it! Are you fucking smoking crack? You got a killer on your ass. This guy don't look like he plays. Spray him! Yeah! Yeah, you needed a shower, you dirty little shit. <sighs> Alright, and then after you attack Scissor Man, you will run into the nearest doorway or down the nearest hallway, whatever. Just something to bear in mind. Alright, so the corner of the box is covered in ants, and you can find hints throughout the game by checking out various click points. But again, be cautious, because uh, Scissor Man just might jump out at you, and that's not a good day. Especially if you're in a tight, confined area, and that has happened. And sometimes you got no choice but to try and fight him off, which does reduce your energy level, so be wary of that as well. It goes from white to orange to red. And if he attacks you on red, it doesn't matter how often you press that button, it is game over for your ass. Okay, so we still got some more of the first floor to explore out, so let's do it. What about this door right here? Oh shit, hey, let's talk to this guy. Excuse me. <laughs> oh damn. I guess he'll never get ahead of the competition. Uh, let's check out these click points. His fucking chest is all blowed out and it got decapitated, and he was sat in a chair with his head precociously placed upon his severed neck. That is some brutal shit, folks. That is a sick sense of humor right there. Jeffrey Dahmer would be proud of that. Uh, well, the blanket's got blood stains on it. We need to fucking call somebody. Do it! Well, the telephone's dead. Goody. Well, let's get out of here, Mr. Dead folks. Sorry, man. You were probably just sitting there minding your own business. And isn't it really funny how the guys, the security guards in this university look like Hitler? I mean, <laughs> they got the little fucking mustache and hat and everything. Oh, man. Alright, second floor, let's do it. Alright, so first things first, I recommend doing a good sweep of every floor, uh, just to make sure that, uh, see if you can find any hints, items, whatever you might need. Anything there? Any, there isn't anything that seems useful. Oh shit. On we go. Uh, it's too quiet in here. I don't like it. Let's see if there's anything in here. Nope. You know, there was something in there, but it didn't look like it was anything Jennifer could use. What? What are these doing here? A pair of underpants is hanging up to dry. Ooh, someone was being naughty. Handbags and umbrellas. Now, if you recall from my previous playthrough with Helen, uh, that Rose and her boyfriend were looking to fuck uh, on that night that she was in the university. Come on, Jennifer, get the fuck out. So, perhaps that's where those soiled underwear came from? Pretty scary. Alright, we're going to go in here. We've explored this end of the hallway. So we're going to go in the bathroom. Let's see if there's anything cool in here we can swipe up. Oh shit! Fucking guts out and everything. Looks like her tits got ripped off. <laughs> That's not a good way to die, I mean, or even be found. Ooh. Well, what about this one? Fucking Jennifer just got done fucking dropping her guts all over the floor. 
the just the mere sound of puking just ugh, not good doesn't sit well with me at all all right if I recall correctly yeah this is the door that leads to the laboratory okay good is there anything in here I can use Helen's desk. It's very neat and organized. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. You have the office key. Okay, good. And I believe the office key means this particular door right here, which leads into that therapy room that we were in earlier. So we're going to check it out. Okay, patient's charts. We're gonna check out this desk too, and hopefully fucking Scissor Man doesn't get any bright ideas. Cheap table. Yeah, that does look pretty fucking cheap. People fucking skimp costs wherever they can, right? To me, I need a nice fat sturdy chair to sit in because I flop. Okay, I fucking flop into my shit all the time. Nothing better than after a long ass day just Pugh. All right, and there's nothing else down there that I can get into, and that's just from sheer memory, folks. Get your funky ass up the stairs. There's a killer on loose, and you're sitting there with your thumb in your ass, Jennifer. Ugh. Oh, those footsteps. <laughs> Oh shit. Kill. All those monitors are saying kill. Oh shit. Well, we're gonna try to hide in the bathroom again. Get your f Okay, I was double tapping the whole time. It wasn't working. Looks like we dodged him. Can I go in here? Fierro's laboratory is written on the door and it is locked. I guess Fierro must be a big giant asshole. Don't touch my stuff! check out this door good good all right so again with the various click points you might find a hint and I'm pretty sure there's one here yep I discovered hint number three excellent here's another good hiding spot that you can get away from scissor man he can't see you when you're up on the high bunk oh what's this shit over here anything interesting of course not Oh, it just looks like a big white blobby thing just chilling on top of the shelf. Nothing weird there. I guess it's meant to be a pillow. Couldn't tell you. Alright, so I have a ladder key and an oil can, so that should be good enough to get me out of here. Now, in order to leave the university, I have to use that ladder key on the fire escape ladder that's up the stairs here. So let's get the fuck out of Dodge. Not entirely sure I hit every click point, but again, I'm not a big, you know. Hence, I've been playing this game for a while now. Uh, I would encourage you to go ahead and try to find them yourself just for the experience, okay? Um, I. Yeah, I get a little too nervous, especially as I start getting towards the end of the game. I don't want to be jumped out at, especially as hiding places and everything else become a lot more harder to find. Can I get out of here?
Well, we're back on solid ground, and we are out. Jennifer made it. Oh, yes. All right, so that's the end of scenario one. Beautiful.